Hey everybody, and welcome to another Innistar the Modeler. This is now the second Century Castings kit that I'm going to do here. This is the Stun Gun from Space 1999. So, much like the Comlock, this is a 1 to 1 ratio kit, and it's made of polyurethane. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at what's inside. You can see the box says there are 13 parts here. And uh, let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so here we have the 13 parts. Um, let me just kind of go through them with you here. Uh, this first section here is the slide switch for the kill and stun setting. And they give you two different options as to the switch that slides back and forth. So I was familiar with this one. Um, and apparently there are some models that were made with this T-shaped switch. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and utilize this one. And also bear in mind, apparently there were some models that were made on the series without this switch at all. But uh, I do remember it from the series, so I'm going to go ahead and include that. Next to them here are the side buttons. You have two options to use here. And these are the buttons that go here. And then you have the main trigger switch. And then you have the emitters. So there are four emitters. And at first I thought it was an error that uh, the emitters were of different heights. But actually that is the way the studio model was, is that uh, the emitters did vary in height from top to bottom. And that can be seen here on the package as well. It goes from lowest to highest. And then we come to the gun itself. Now, overall, it's a pretty decent casting of the weapon. As with uh, most of these things, you will find some surface imperfections, and you can see there are a number of them here on the back side of the handle. And the first thing I plan to do is to uh, make them more apparent by taking my X-Acto knife and uh, just cutting them out a bit more. And after that's done, I'm going to use a glazing putty, uh, this stuff here. Uh, to uh, put over them and then we're going to use sandpaper and smooth that over and hopefully get rid of all of those. Now one other thing I plan to do is to work with the uh, slide switch here. Um, as with the com lock you can make this into a static model meaning that the buttons won't move uh, but there is a way that you can make this um, switch slide uh, backwards and forwards. Um, I came across this method on the um, on the net on YouTube and um, so I can't take credit for it but I'll go into more detail once I uh, get to that there. So the first thing we're going to do is deal with the imperfections and we'll go from there. Alright so I'll start on that and I will show you my progress here in just a second. Okay so just moving along here I'm not sure you'll be able to tell in this lighting here but um, it took quite a bit of work to uh, get these uh, little pits out. Uh, I'm not sure you can tell here but it's pretty smoothed over. Uh, I started off with using the um, glazing uh, putty and then I moved on to just Tamiya's white putty. Uh, the glazing putty seemed a little thick to do a second time so I went ahead and finished it off with the white putty. But uh, it's pretty smooth now and uh, also polished up the rest of the uh, laser here. So, uh, and I also rescribed some of the lines along here and got rid of the seam that uh, was visible here. So, um, she's pretty much ready to prime here. And I uh, also worked on the, the main switch as well. And um, that had a few little bubbles in it too. And then I need to work on the uh, emitters here as well as the switch. So next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and prime it and let that dry for a little bit before I apply the silver paint. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use Tamiya's um, bare metal silver for the base color here. And then I'm going to use Tester's um, Chrome for the emitters. All right, so I'll keep moving along here and show you my progress here uh, shortly. Okay, uh, next step is to work on these emitters and the buttons. And uh, when you get them, there'll be some excess plastic all around, so you do have to sand that off. Uh, you can certainly do that by hand with sandpaper. You can wet sand them. What I decided to do was I'm very comfortable with using the Dremel here uh, with just a spinning um, grinding tool and I just um, put the piece up to the uh, tool as it's spinning and just kind of square off each side if you will and uh, just grind it down and get it prepped for priming. So these are the emitters now all set to go and the buttons I've rounded off as well. Okay so this is where we're at right now. The uh, emitters and the buttons now have been painted with testers chrome and you can see it provides a nice shiny finish. So pretty satisfied with the way those turned out. Okay, so it's time to move on now to the sliding switch. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to install two magnets into the top portion of the stun gun, here and here. And they will sit 
underneath this section here. The uh, switch, which is a slider here, is going to have a small magnet, this one here, placed into it. And therefore the uh, switch will be able to adhere to the surface because of the magnets and will be able to slide it back and forth from one side to the other. So to help give me uh, an idea of where to mount the magnets uh, into the pistol there, I've decided to use a uh, pin vise to drill some small holes that will represent pretty much the center of the area that we're mount mounting the uh, magnets into. And then we'll use that to mark uh, our location on the gun. Okay, so after positioning this into the proper uh, place here, I was able to mark off two uh, locations here that we're going to use as our guide to drill the holes. Okay, so as you can see here now, we have two magnets that are uh, installed here. And by the way, these are half inch uh, magnets, at least half inch in diameter, and they're about five millimeters deep. Um, I would suggest you get ones that are thinner. Uh, these are just two I happen to have in my own drawer here. And uh, if you go thinner, you just won't have to drill as deep. It makes it a little bit easier. Okay, but nonetheless, they are in place now. And uh, what we have to do here is just place the track on top of that. And then our switch also has a small magnet as well. And you can see it adheres pretty well. And you can easily slide it back and forth. So I wish I could take credit for this, but I can't. It actually uh, is something that I saw on YouTube. And as a gentleman, his name on YouTube is Second Marlowe. And um, he's the one that came up with it. He had uh, created a 3D printed stun gun, and this was his solution to creating a switch that moves. And I thought it was pretty ingenious. All right, so there you have it. Uh, what's next now is to begin painting. And I'm gonna start with painting uh, the uh, silver color and then um, paint in the black areas and we'll move forth from there. I will show you uh, my progress here shortly. Okay everyone and here we now have the finished product. This is the Century Castings Stun Gun Model Kit. Um, it is a one-to-one -one scale replica of the stun gun that we saw on the show Space 1999. So I'd say overall it makes a pretty decent replica of the uh, of the weapon that we see on the TV show. And um, let me just point out a few things here that I think I would do a little differently if I were to do this model again. So um, yeah, I think overall it does make a pretty good replica as I mentioned. However, um, a number of times on this video as well as the um, Comlock video that uh, these types of castings come along with surface imperfections. And um, at the beginning I showed you there were a number of imperfections here on the back handle. And you can see I got rid of most of them. There are a couple of imperfections still here and there. But I worked pretty hard to try to really smooth that over. So I think this worked pretty well. But the one thing I was a little timid on was doing the uh, areas in between these buttons. And if you look closely there's still um, a bit of imperfection there along the... Um, edges of these buttons and along this detailing here. So if I were to do this kit again, I definitely would work a lot harder with getting rid of all these um, and um, just somehow get away uh, or find a way to get in there and uh, that way it can, it can smooth these areas too. The other thing I would do is address the front of the gun a little differently. Um, I would, uh, so there are markings that are on here for placement of the emitters. And um, I think what I would do uh, is pretty much um, smooth this as, uh, as, as much as possible um, and somehow um, perhaps mark where these are supposed to go with maybe some subtle markings but really smooth it over uh, because um, I tried again to um, um, retain some of these markings here because there are these little squares that you're supposed to use to help place these and um, I tried to work around it and still left some um, small imperfections in between the emitters as well. So uh, overall I'm, I'm satisfied with the way this turned out. I think it is a very good kit here. Um, I just would work a little harder with getting rid of these surface imperfections here. So that said, I'd like to move on again to the paint that I used here. The bare metal silver from Tamiya um, is a good color for this um, replica here. I, I'm not sure exactly the uh, color that they used on a TV show, but um, it is a silver type color, and uh, I think this uh, worked pretty well. I'm very happy with the Tamiya colors because they do go on fairly evenly, and they dry quickly. Um, and I've, uh, I've said a number of times in the past, I think they work a little better than the metalizers. 
For the black striping, I did use pin striping again here. I think that works pretty well. Um, at least for uh, nice, uh, or at least allows for very nice sharp lines there. And then the thing I'm most satisfied with is the switch here. And you can tell the decals uh, have been applied here and that this switch with a magnet uh, simply fits on there and uh, can easily slide back and forth that way. So it's a pretty ingenious method, not very hard to do as you saw, and uh, allows you to make a uh, replica, at least it has one movable piece here. Again, the magnets uh, that I used, uh, at least uh, the one I used for the switch there is this one here, and um, these are only um, 9.5 millimeters by one and a half millimeters in thickness there and uh, so you don't have to drill very deep and that's perfect for the switch in particular uh, but they also make ones that are um, 10 millimeters by 1.5 millimeters in depth and um, as I mentioned a little earlier in the video that would be a little easier to work with with having to drill uh, larger openings in the gun itself and uh, with them being thinner you just wouldn't have to drill as deep so I would suggest doing that uh, these magnets, again, I just had in my drawer, so I thought I would use them up. Um, these do run about eight bucks or so for the um, for the kit, and you get 12 here, and I think you get about 10 in the larger uh, magnet set. So let me just take a second and provide a rating for this model kit. So as with the Comlock kit, I'm going to go ahead and give this one a high rating as well. In terms of accuracy, it looked pretty good to me compared to the pictures that I saw online of the actual studio model. Uh, this looks like a pretty good replica. Ease of assembly, there's not a lot to put together here, of course, but um, you do have to deal with the surface imperfections. And if you want to uh, install the magnets like I did, it's not very difficult to do that. Uh, likeability, I enjoyed working with this kit. And affordability, I'd give it a single dollar sign because it comes in at $42, which to me is a reasonable price for this model kit. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this build as well. Um, it's a pretty simple project that you can get done within two to three days. Uh, most of your challenge is gonna be with dealing with those imperfections that I talked about. Uh, painting is not that difficult to do. It's a matter of just masking these areas off. Um, so I think it's a nice piece that you can add to your collection if you are a uh, Space 1999 fan. So as usual, if you have any comments or questions, you can post them here on my YouTube channel, or you can contact me at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Coming up here soon will be the Colonial One ship from Battlestar Galactica, and then I also recently purchased the Ranger from the movie Interstellar, so that should be a pretty fun kit to put together as well. Okay, and that does it for now. As always, I appreciate you watching my videos, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.